This is Bodhi Linux. It is a very clean Linux distribution and it's very, very lightweight. This is what it looks like by default. And in this video, I always have a big emphasis on by default because anything in Linux can be changed and customized to your liking. Bodhi Linux barely comes with any applications installed by default, so you can install things that you actually need without having to uninstall useless things. Today we're going to go over installing the operating system. We're going to go over a little bit about the desktop environment called Moksha. We're going to check the settings, some other stuff too, and this video is one in the series of my Bodhi Linux videos. This video is the first video, and in this video I just do simple things. I, I go over the desktop environment and stuff like that. So if you're interested in seeing more advanced things, check out those links in the description when I make them. As I said, this is a very lightweight operating system, and I found this on a list on the internet of smallest Linux distributions in the world. So if you want to revive an old computer, this is definitely the operating system for you. If you're liking this video so far, please give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. So let's get started installing. It is time for me to create my virtual machine of Bodhi Linux. On my host machine, I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and although I'm giving my virtual machine half of that, Bodhi Linux is not resource dependent at all, and doesn't even need 4 gigabytes of RAM. This operating system also takes up a very small amount of storage. Choose an option with your arrow keys. The two main options here are try Bodhi and install now. But since I'm in a virtual machine, I don't have to worry about trying it first. Now let's click enter to load the installer. Looking at the text on the bottom here, I can see that we have no errors found. This is the Flutter installer. This is the same installer that Ubuntu uses, and it does make sense because Bodhi Linux is based on Ubuntu 20.04. Once you click this install button, there's no going back, and your current data on your disk is erased. So make sure you back up your files, unless you're using a virtual machine, of course. Alright, let's create our username and password. Bodhi Linux is a very lightweight distribution. The desktop environment that Bodhi comes with is called Moksha, or sometimes called Enlightenment. Bodhi Linux is extremely lightweight, but it's not as insane as doing Linux from scratch, where you'd have to install your actual desktop environments and other things. Bodhi Linux is for people that want a minimal start to Linux with all the necessities installed, so that you can install all the apps you need without having to uninstall any apps that you don't care about. Bodhi Linux has the Synaptic Package Manager pre-installed. Also, since Bodhi is based on Ubuntu, we have the apt package manager on our command line. If you've ever been an Ubuntu user, you'll be glad to know that Bodhi Linux comes with Ubuntu's repositories as well as Bodhi Linux repositories. Our installation is now complete and it is time to restart. If you're installing this on actual hardware, you have to remove the USB and then press enter. And as you can see, our screen is not expanded to our displays, which is something I'll fix right now. Navigate to the settings panel, and although you'd expect it to be in the screen section, it's actually in the preferences section. Although it may not necessarily make sense to developers, people would definitely look in the screen section for this. So I think that they should move it over there. So anyway, I'm going to do outputs, virtual one, resolution, 1920 by 1080, which is my display. We're going to save and then press apply. There we go, that looks a lot better. But while we're here in our settings, you can see that it's a very customizable interface by default without having to install anything else. It's good because everything in Linux is customizable, and the fact that the default settings app comes with a lot of customization is very useful for a beginner user. So I have noticed that when I minimize and stuff like that, uh, it, there's no animation. When I expand the window, there's not really an animation, but for some reason when I double click on the window title bar to collapse it, there is an animation, which is very strange. I think it has something to do with the fact that I'm in a virtual machine without 3D acceleration. I'm not sure, so don't think that anything visually in this virtual machine will be exactly aligned with what you would do on an actual machine. By the way, I actually really like this thing in the Moksha desktop environment because it's almost like a part of your wallpaper. Like the windows can go on top of it and you can simply move this and click on another desktop. It's a very simple and useful desktop environment. And I like how the default theme goes very well with the wallpaper. Um, I, I love how they customized it and took the time into making the theme look like that. Well, let's go over the default Moksha desktop environment first. So, what you may have noticed is if you click on the desktop, it brings you this um, menu, which is the exact same thing as clicking over here. Maybe if you had a window that was in Chromium maximized and you didn't, you couldn't click on the desktop, it's still useful to have this over here. So, in this menu, we have uh, applications. So, let's go over here first. So, in accessories, we have Leafpad, which is a text editor. Next, we have language support and monitor settings. These are some of the preferences. In graphics, we have ePhoto, just a photo viewer. 
an internet by default the chromium web browser is installed which is an open source version of google chrome of course you can install normal google chrome on it but i suggest using the open source version because it doesn't have any spyware that google chrome has in sound and video we actually have installed by default the pulse audio volume control which i always have to install in my host which i use um ubuntu and this is a very useful app. Let's say you're recording something and you have devices, uh, microphones attached to here that you want to um, record as you're going. You can change the volume levels and mix it. You also have playback that you can change. This is just basically like pressing the volume button. Um, next up, we have system tools. We have the app center, the synaptic package manager, help, network configuration, which is in the settings app, bulk rename. So it just renames a bunch of files. That's pretty much it. It's a useful tool. And then there's terminology, which is the terminal. Then we have the file manager. So the three apps pinned over here by default are Chromium, the terminal, and then the uh, file manager. So the file manager is the Thuner file manager. Hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, if I didn't, tell me how to pronounce it in the comments. And again, this matches the default Bode Linux style by default. So if you changed the wallpaper, uh, it wouldn't, I don't think it would necessarily match. So, unless it had a lot of green in it, I guess? I don't know. It depends. First, I want to tell you about the Bodhi App Centers. It's a website, I'm pretty sure. So maybe I'm going to search for Opera, which is just a web browser. Let's search. There's no Opera in the App Center. Of course, you can install it. Whether that be from a repository with apt, or an app image, or maybe the deb file you find online. Um, and Nautilus here. We have Nautilus, which is a file manager and the way you install it from the app center is you simply just click install you just click xdg open and there's literally just this window that says do you wish to install nautilus and if we click yes we now oh we have to enter a password first so we can authenticate now and all right it's complete so we can close this and now we have an extra file manager. I don't know where it's going to go. Right here. It's in accessories. And what I like is, even if you install another file manager, which in our case is Nautilus, it still goes with the theme. It's not like it's one of those weird, mysterious apps that's like, it's the only app that doesn't go with the theme. This actually works. It goes with the theme, does what you want. And I use Nautilus on my host. So like, for example, this. This is Nautilus. And it looks, it's the same thing it's just it just looks a little bit different because it's a different theme so yeah this is this is our, our new file manager that we just installed now we can see what our places are so there's this cool uh, little option here for if you go to places you can just go to home or desktop and i think that there's a way to, to add one to this so if uh, let's see let's go to settings panel and files and places uh use a custom file manager thuner shown menu home desktop and you can add trash file system temp you know a lot of stuff like that you can use a different file manager as well, so if you want to do to Nautilus, you can do that. But I'm just going to keep it at the default, and let's apply and close. Okay, so now if we look in places, it shows more stuff. In Quick Launcher, this is a good feature. I wish... Actually, there probably is a way to set a keyboard shortcut, but I'm not going to get too deep into this stuff. But Quick Launcher is kind of like um, maybe Spotlight, you can think of it, like on, like on Mac, uh, Mac OS. You, know, you can search for any app. So let's say we wanted to search for Thuner, right? Right, it's right here. We've got all the apps. That's that's our application launcher. Now we can take a screenshot. So select the screenshot mode. Delay time. Okay, so instant shot, delayed shot, settings, close. Instant shot, right? There we go. Quality. We'll go to perfect and then save. Save. Okay. Will it save? Yes or no? Okay, it looks like it saved. Um, I want it to show the icons on the desktop. Like usual, I'm not going to get too deep into stuff like this, but it's safe for the desktop. I just wish that there was a way to have desktop icons, and there definitely is, because it's Linux, so you can do anything. So anyway, here we have our power menu, so when you want to power off, suspend, lock, reboot, hibernate, or log out from your computer, you can just click here, or you can click on system, and they are all here. So there's a lot of ways to get into different spots. Here we have the notification panel. It shows a lot of notifications. I think it's a bit too much, honestly. It shows you literally everything that you do with your volume, which is something I don't, I, I prefer not to have. Here we have our actual volume slider that we can change, and we can have mute as well. And here's our network. Yeah, network. You can disconnect VPN. You can add a VPN connection. Not going to get into that. 
and you can edit your connections as well. So something about this this taskbar, whatever they want to call it, uh, you can actually begin moving gadgets, which reminds me of KDE Plasma because you can move it. And also, what I don't understand is why they ha why they have this over here, like right here. Why can't they just put it right next to everything else? That's what I always do whenever I install a new Bodhi installation. I just move it to the side. Okay. Before you do anything in your terminal, I strongly suggest that you should do a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Because if you don't do this, there's a high possibility that you won't be able to install anything. So a lot of times, when I do maybe um, sudo apt install neofetch, right? Um, this time it's going to work because I already did the sudo apt up update. And also, I think it might have done it automatically because when I installed this, it actually said install updates while installing Bodhi. So I, I clicked it and I assume that that's what it does. It's going to install. I can click yes. It's the same as Ubuntu or Debian or anything like that. And something I noticed about this desktop environment is I like how I actually like it how when you move a window down, it puts it over the dock or taskbar or whatever you want to call it. Because that's not how it is in a lot of desktop environments. They put a lot of things on top of the layer of windows. And I like how this kind of favors the windows over anything else. Like it go, they go over this, they go over the clock. It's something that gives you a lot of flexibility and it just makes this desktop environment feel really solid. And I actually really like this desktop environment. I would switch to them. Um, I actually would. So if I had another machine that I... Um, didn't currently have all my files on because I don't want to back up everything and just install Bodhi Linux just because if I was able to I would definitely switch to this desktop environment it would be in the list of desktop environments that I would choose but you can install other desktop environments and that's getting a little bit advanced but you can install them and I installed the, the GNOME desktop before not on this not on this machine but I did try it before it did work it's not GNOME 42 or anything above that currently uh, it was, I think it was just, it was GNOME 3 point something, I don't remember, it, but it wasn't 40, it was below 40, GNOME 40. Another thing about this, this terminal is I like how um, it has like an image as a background by default. It just looks really cool. And I like how when you hit backspace too many times, it gives you a little sound, I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, a little sound and then this, this thing over here that kind of blinks and it also happens if you have if you're moving a cursor around you move it too far it does this as well that's just another cool thing that i like so now let's get into the lock screen which is something i want to go over because i think that it uses light dm i wasn't sure if it's sddm or light dm okay yeah this this is light dm so if i enter my password right we're back in and if we log out actually so this this shows it better here it is. This is definitely light DM. Uh, in this, it's not fully like developed and stuff. You can't change your keyboard layout from here if you click on this. Um, the time is just the time and accessibility settings. You only have three. You've got high contrast, which you can turn on. Actually, there was no difference at all. So that doesn't work, at least in this virtual machine. There's a screen reader and an on-screen keyboard. If I turn on that, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Not right now, I'm not sure if it will work eventually, but we can suspend and we can quit. Yeah, it says you can restart or shut down. So now we can enter our password and we're back in. I don't know what that is, why the splash screen shows on top of there. This is Bodhi Linux. It's a very customizable interface and I really like it. I would switch to it if I had a reason to, if it would be on my list. It's a very, very nice operating system by default. I just really like the theme. I like the the enlightenment theme that it has. I strongly suggest that you should try this. If you have a slow computer or maybe you want, maybe you're an intermediate or advanced user or even a beginner user to Linux and you only want a minimal amount of apps by default. So if you want to install everything next, as long as you know how, you can use this desktop environment and operating system. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And it doesn't use, it's a very lightweight distribution. I literally found this by searching very small Linux distributions and it was on a a website a blog post that said the smallest Linux distributions, like Tiny Core Linux was on there, which is like the smallest graphical Linux out there, I think. So this is a very lightweight, and if you have a, a small hard disk and not a lot of memory, this will still uh, work smoothly. I know I gave this eight gigabytes of uh, memory, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna make another video on testing Bodhi Linux that's more advanced. I'm going to be changing the display manager. I'm going to 
test other desktop environments. I'm going to um, install some flat packs, app images, and other things that I didn't mention. And I'm going to probably change the theming and stuff. But so that's it for today's tutorial. I will put the link to the new video in the description when I'm done with it. So I will see you next time.